Yeah, I don't know if you just want to start the show from here. Or do you want me to do some some little introduction or anything like that? Your call, bro. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm your guest. I, I, I don't one way or another, you know. However, you want to do it. Uh, did you decide on uh, the overall topic, or are we do, we just going to have us a discussion? And yeah, I just wanted to keep it natural and talk about your encounters that you had on the river and the other encounters that you had when you and your cousins were making the fire and trying to make it bigger to keep these things away. Right. Yeah. Um, one of the main things about that big fire, um, you know how it is when you're reliving something and there's certain aspects you kind of glass over for time's sake because they're really not relevant. Well, there's, when I was collecting up that firewood, one of the things that really stands out looking back on it is uh, it had to have been about 20, 25 yards, something like that. Back on a game trail, there was a bunch of stuff stacked up around. I didn't pay much attention to it, but thinking back on it, uh, it could have been an area they they were in already. You know what I mean? So, And it's all speculation. The thing is, is up here in Alaska, the danger, um, it, I've been reaching out to elders and relatives and whatnot as far as uh, doing my thing on my channel, and I haven't come across anything that wasn't of a predatory behavior up here, uh, up here in Alaska. That, uh, and I'm looking for good ex <laughs> I mean, there's really no good ones because it still scares the crap out of people. But ones that aren't perpetuating my bias, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I'm biased because I was attacked. So up until 2006, it had always been tree shaking and breaking stuff, bro. And, and maybe throwing some stuff and you skedaddle, you know, you, you take the hint and you get out of Dodge. That That's our culture. We're always taught. You know, stay away from the trees, blah, blah. You know, go away from them. Don't seek them out. They'll eat you. That's the overwhelming thing everywhere across the state is they'll eat you. So until 2006, I never really put much behind that because all I've ever seen up until that point was screaming. Some fairly close running, you know, taking off and whatnot. But the level in which they came in on that shack um, and we're, I mean, dude, less than three feet away, like it, it was right there in my face. Um, I, I still don't have the proper words to express just making eye contact with this thing. The understanding I immediately got, it wasn't mind speak. It was something within me that opened, uh, like clicked on like a, an ancient, you know, primal type of fear thing that was activated because of the attack and it was all set in this eye gaze man it, it it just it's it was looking down at my cousin under the table and as soon as we turned our heads its direction because this is literally a little more than arm's length away through the window when i made eye contact with it it took his eyes from my cousin and over to me and then scowled i mean just scowled down hard and uh it was all said right there you know, mm -hmm. the feeling we got coming inside the door when we saw the three sets of eyes shine. It, it wasn't the standard rah, rah, shake something, break it. And typically, if you spotlight them at night, they try to hide behind something. They duck, they move. It, you know what I mean? These just stood there like they had nothing to hide. And that's that's another thing that stands out. And, and shooting it three times with the third, uh, it, it just... It should have went down, you know what I mean? But it, it, it didn't. And that, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. That just bothers me, you know, because I've used that same caliber, let's say, uh, actually that same uh, bang, bang used, we'll say, was the same one that's used to kill walrus on the annual walrus hunt 
So this thing, the ticks is putting down walrus, moose, bear, it, you name it, it's putting it down. And this thing took three and, and didn't flinch. Now, it stopped moving forward, but it didn't flinch. And with all the other activity going on in the tree line, I, it was time to go. You know, it, it was man, it's so easy to look back on it and, and shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, that 2020 hindsight. But in that moment, I, I still didn't think we were going to make it, bro. I, I really didn't. Um, okay. Once so I pushed, go ahead. To break, to break things down for people who haven't maybe seen the other episode where you tell your encounters, you and your cousin and your uncle are going up river to yeah. stay maybe a week to look for gold. Uh, 10 days was the, was the plan. We had enough provisions for 10 days. And of course, a few extra, you know, for emergency days and what have you, but we we're going prospecting for gold. Uh, an elder in New Steahawk brought up, uh, a good sized black bear up that way and if i happen to see it on a berry patch get that bear for him i wanted another rug anyway it culturally when an elder asks for something they may not ask directly it's kind of like uh, an elder coming up and saying oh i got a lot of wood over there geez i need to get that cut and stack sometime he said it to you yeah you know what i mean he's your elder you immediately go you step in and go oh, i'll take care of that for you so when an elder speaks you kind of take that uh, not for granted you know and so i was looking out for a black bear for the guy and plus i, I wanted a rug i'm not gonna lie yeah I, you know but i wasn't up there to hunt hunting i, I had got that new but that was just to take out there dial it in so to speak because i had the ghost ring combat sights on it and then you know that crap went down you know uh trying to lure us out because essentially i feel and i just feel this way it, i feel it was luring us out i don't know how long this thing had been watching us in there but i know once the creek happened uh everything came into a sharper focus as far as the feeling in the air the the air pressure changed uh not not quite as bad as it was when we came in the door and, and lashed that little j hook but there was a difference in the air so and that's why we immediately thought bear uh, i mean we immediately thought because we're on a salmon river that's a that's the thing that would make the most sense because uh, you know i don't want to make it sound like every time you go out you're going to be attacked by a hairy man that's not it but we were thinking bear so we grabbed the spotlight we're going to shine this bear do our thing and once we swept from the bank side over to our left to the tree line side and we saw those three sets of eye shine, uh, the, the sinking feeling that went on, um, it, it was like, well, uh, because they didn't try to hide, they didn't try to move, they didn't give a flying rat's patootie, we were there. Like they wanted to be seen in other words. So and what just, do you think you know, caused the attack? I don't know. That is, it's the first time. My Did you whole, guys cut I've, down? Yeah, it's the first time they've gotten on that level, you know, that I've personally seen. I've heard stories, but those are stories until it happens to you. You know what I mean? And and how the the level of aggression was palpable. It was in the air. It wasn't. Uh, like a weird kind of feeling like maybe they're curious. No, it was it was all bad that, that air pressure. It's hard to explain. It's it's almost like okay, I've said before I'm into competition stereo systems the low notes and some of those bass notes down in the 20 below Hertz That's the closest Pressure I felt to compare to what I felt in that cabin Okay. So, uh, so you arrive at the cabin and you guys start getting terrorized by the Sasquatch. Oh yeah, uh, half and hour after you, dark. Yeah, were you guys cutting down any wood, shooting the guns, anything like nope. that that may have caused them to nope. get we angry? Got there and just unloaded, and that—that's another thing. It, we weren't out picking berries. We weren't throwing a net out. We weren't tapping any of the resources. We just got there, uh, literally. So 
So just by your presence, that triggered them. Yeah. And, and like I said, I don't know how long they had been watching us because nothing happened until after it got dark by about a half hour. Okay. Can and then you the describe, whole place, What's that? Okay. Can you describe to the best of your ability what the Sasquatch looked like, the one that peeked into the window and the one that you saw when you tried going out to the boat? Yeah, well, uh, the one I saw going out to the boat was pitch black. Okay. It, it was just a black mass. If I had, if I could see eyes or a face, I would have been shooting for the head. That's why I went center mass. It was just a big black blob. Um, the one in the window was Native American around the eyes, flattened nose down, broad. And I only saw from, you know, the, the top of the lip, basically, to just above the brow in that 18-inch gap. It was big. Uh, it, it was big, and and the the look in the eye is what did it, man. Um, that that shooting I did, it wasn't at all. I'm gonna be brave and fight it off. It was autopilot. It was it was self protection. Like, um, I was off handed. Boom, 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 and you know the scream and the place shifted. Now. The, the quiet after the place shifted, because initially I thought we were going in the river, but the quiet, there was this ominous um, presence. It, it was a presence because not only did we have visual confirmation, this thing just shoved the whole place, obviously could just smash it down. That's another thing that bothers me. Why didn't they? Why didn't they smash that place and smack me against a tree, you know, and, and, and be done with it? They, they had the ability. So after sitting there for it being quiet for, and let me tell you, when moths would hit the window, bro, the the anxiety level would, would go through the roof. You know, you, I was sitting there just squeezing so hard on that that I would have to let go every once in a while to get feeling back in my hands. It, it wasn't even voluntary. It was so, so stressful and tense. Um, it was it was a form of torture is what it was. I, I was in my own mind tortured anyway, but yeah, just Native American around the face. Uh, like the closest thing I've seen was one of those uh, antique Native American teletypes or whatever they're called. And he had a very wrinkled, defined face. It was very similar to that, but with the nose flatter to the face and broader. And it was an ash gray, almost like a, like the fire being freshly put out, but a little darker than that. You know, not like a bright white ash, but just a nice gray. It was re relatively even toned outside of all the wrinkles. Could you hear him walking around outside? Not initially. A after shots were fired, yeah. We, we heard when they're moving, like... It, it sounded like rotor wash from helicopter when that thing still in the near distance started. Thump, 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 thump. That's what I immediately thought was helicopter. And like we would have heard it, you know, coming in. <clears throat> so that's that's when we started hearing stuff. And like when they started running around and I say white knuckle terror. Um. There was a lot of noises going on, bro, but I, I couldn't pinpoint exactly one. It, it was so much like it was basically background noise and I was tunnel vision staring at a spot on the floor, hoping I didn't hear a window break or that door open. Mm -hmm. Around here, I find these big rocks. I mean, good sized rocks and they're moved around all over the place. You mentioned right. that one of these things threw a rock at your face. Yeah. Why do you think? He, why do you think he did that? I think it was trying to get me. I, had I not scooted back from the edge of that bank, bro, I, I, we wouldn't be talking. That rock would have took my head off. It, it was a little bit bigger than a basketball, and it had to have been in the air as I was as I was getting ready to stand up. So it had already threw it, anticipating where I was going to stand up. Oh, dude, the cunning. The, the cunning involved, you know, um, like how they'll mimic things to draw people out. They're, 
we, we just don't have enough information. You know what I mean? Because these, these are the questions that bother me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, why mimic something to draw someone out? What's the intent behind that? What's, I, I don't know. There, there's something off about it. Yeah. And I can tell it bothers you a lot talking about it. And I relate that to my paranormal experiences. For example, I've seen a, a shadow person and when i think of that you know i get that same feeling that you do with the bigfoot yeah because yeah, it's right it, up it on wasn't the back to the spine and it builds slowly because then your memory takes over and it's like ooh, i mean the yeah. hair on my arm's starting to stand up a little bit yeah your mind yeah. puts you in that that place again yeah and i have a very good memory so that's why once i start looking back on it it, it really bothers me like um I, I drew that that face. I'll send you the uh, a copy of the original. I'll email it to you. Um, but I use part of that for my graphic design on on the cover of my channel that I pointed out to you the other day. So um, I have that image of it burned in my head, like burned in. I, I, I I've been warned. Uh, Tom Seawood, uh, he does uh, Sasquatch Island. He's a uh, from BC, and. Uh, he told me don't go back up there. He was like, they're going to know you. And I was like, well, you know, uh, what if they do, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay. Hopefully I get some good footage. I mean, <laughs> what, what do you do with that? You know, it's, it's. Yeah. I know you've had a lot of private conversations with natives and elders around there. Yeah. Is there anything that you can share with us? regarding the sasquatch um well I, I can share what we've always been told as far as what you would call the mythology or you know um the hairy man if you misbehave is gonna is gonna snatch you up if you go into the woods alone it's gonna snatch you up put you in its basket take you home and eat you it's that that's been the the story i was always told and it goes no further than that, other than, you know, people's individual views, like elders of mine say, don't chase them. You never follow them. You stay away from the trees. If you see one, you get the hell out of there. Um, one of my elders, she's in her 80s. She had one of these things mimic a baby to draw her and another one of my cousins out of the apartment they're in. And this is on, on Alaska Island, bro, on an island back in 1967. I mean, the level of cunning to mimic a known baby imitated the baby perfectly to draw them out. Like, for what purpose? You know, they had small children in the apartment and it was just two women. You know, I, I know women are capable. That's not what I'm saying. There's something, something creepy about that. So, yeah, I, all the unknowns drive me crazy. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell me about the story where you started here in the Alcalls and oh, you yeah. guys had to build the fire? That was yeah. the I next mean, if you year. Could get into that. Yeah, that was the next year um, after the the attack on the Nuyakuk. Um, I never stopped going back out in the woods because I knew if I had stopped, I would never go again. I, I would never go again if I didn't um get back out there i was uh had the median nerve in my right hand crushed on the fishing boat that year in 07 um earlier uh, it was on the fourth of july opening so i was bandaged up but my fishing season was done uh a couple of my cousins they wanted to get up to new stewie hawk for some reason or another i was around i wasn't going back out on the fishing boat so i was like i'll go with you guys and I mean, it's it's early in the year for any kind of hunting. I know one of my cousins was going to be doing something in New Studio Hawk. See, we, we started sipping a little, you know what I mean? So the whole purpose of going, I, it was claimed to be to get to New Studio Hawk to get him there. But it could have just been an excuse to go whoop it up in the woods, you know? So we get our game plan. We're going to go up there. Sorry, I got my pit bulls are at the door. And they feel me getting anxious, so they, you know, they want to come and check things out. Anyway, so <clears throat> we 
we get up there and it's getting dark. We left late. We got a late start. By no means were any of us drunk. We don't. We do drink when we're out there in the woods, but we don't drink in boat like all messed up, ripping around. We've lost like hundreds of people with that crap. We we take boating very serious. That's why we rarely will go anywhere on a river at night. It has to be dire consequences. So. Uh, Anyway, we get up to this spot. It's getting dark, and it, it's a perfect spot. It's got a muskeg that cuts back around the back on just about 60 yards total before the muskeg starts on that side. About a three-foot river bank. It's, it's the higher of the two at that point, and there's a bunch of uh, beetle-killed spruce that I figured we'll use perfectly for firewood. Good spot. We were only going to be there a couple hours. It, it was still didn't get fully dark like 100 percent pitch black it got to it like a dusk but it was still fairly light out um the fire was mainly a more like a a mental a visual barrier you know what i mean we figured because right where we had this fire going we basically figured we had a barrier between that muskeg area where the heavier trees started and the skiff kind of like a a fence uh, for better you know not a better word for it so and we were only anticipating maybe a bear or something like that but as we're sitting there in that owl hooted um it, it was a very natural hoot it was very natural and, and just not alarming i didn't get the creep factor but a moment later when the one responded up behind us down river a little ways that changed everything because when in my mind's eye when i look back i see uh there was uh hold on a second there was a a couple logs that were laid kind of crisscross kind of thing i because of what happened the year before i i, I normally don't speak on this part because I, I kind of feel dumb about it but i had an immediate panic to where when i heard that second hoot that was unnatural i jumped up and i went to i went to run like uh, not even thinking about it and i i was trying to step over these logs it it, it was just it wasn't good you know what i mean it was like something was still very heavy and it still is to this day but that flight fight or flight flight wanted to go like without me even just you know being coherent of it so as i stumble and i fall i, I pick myself up and i'm immediately i calm myself down i was like just just chill that's when the third one did its thing across the river now it, the other two were relatively mild uh, the second one wasn't natural and louder the one across the river was very loud like we're at like almost 85 yards to cross the river at this point it was so loud on the initial hoot that we felt it like it had reverberation to it from that distance that that's something i mean you know what i'm saying so after that one got done and we're, we're, we're all looking at each other now because we know that something is not right. And we're immediately anticipating, you know, we're talking about building the fire bigger. Where the original hoot came from, there's another hoot, loud, unnatural. And then the one behind us did it again. And then the one across the river got real loud with it. And then we're, we're building up the fire. Things, uh, you know, when all we had was a little pop-up tent and a little bag with adult beverages in it right and this bonfire that's all we have plus the wood cut up and ready to add to the fire along with rifles of course but we didn't have a bunch of gear there and so after the second volley of the hoots and we were getting this fire bigger when they when they sound off again it didn't start with the the first spot because see the first two times it started from the same one making these noises and it kind of circle around before it started again we heard thrashing across the river and a splash up river where we we couldn't make anything out and we're assuming by where 
this thing should have come out at that distance hearing that we heard the hoot with the click popping with it now that that really put a it changed it was creepy enough but having those two octaves like two separate sounds at the same time very clearly it was it was very unnerving but like awe-inspiring like that it was really cool uh harmonically speaking to hear it like that you know and then the other ones sound off same way the owl hoot with a click popping I, I have no idea what that means i've asked several other people that have heard just owl hoots but uh most of the people i've talked to haven't had that clicking simultaneously with it so i don't know I have no idea what that is. Maybe maybe someone's experienced something similar, but that's that's what brought the creep factor up much higher. And on top of that, we know for a fact one is moving. And when they sounded off that time with the click popping, they were obviously closer. They weren't like imminently on us, but they were definitely closer. <laughs> Now, at this point, we get all back to back next to the fire and we're trying to keep it light. I'm telling them, oh, they couldn't get me last year. So now they're going to get me since I'm with two idiots. Yeah, you're just busting chops, trying to keep it. I, I really wanted to go into panic mode, bro. I, I really did. But I, I just, you know, stayed calm. And as we're sitting back to back, we, we all picked a direction of an owl. We're like, who, who's. Who's going for the owl upriver? Because we, we didn't say hairy man out loud. It, that's another thing. You don't want to be out in the woods saying hairy man or kachai because you'll bring it in. That I, I forgot about that part when you asked me about what the elders would, would tell us. So we're saying, uh, you know, I'll take the owl that we first heard. And, you know, my cousin took the other ones or whatever. We're sitting there and they do it one more time. And, and this time when they do it is very, very, very loud. Um, the whole area just reverberates with this noise and it's almost uh, it's almost so strong it's disorientating you know what I mean it, it, it kind of makes you feel a, a, a weird kind of way who knows there might be something to that I don't I don't know I, it's not like I fell on the ground twitching or nothing but it, it was definitely made to intimidate you know what I'm saying so as we're sitting there uh, my one cousin was telling me do you hear that and you know amongst small talk as we're we're talking along we we weren't talking about anything we're keeping what we would do if they came in on us to ourselves it, it wasn't like okay you know be ready to shoot over here be it wasn't that it, it was mundane nothing stuff because we didn't it was almost like we didn't want to admit what was happening kind of deal uh so as we're sitting there I, I'm, I'm not trying to draw it out. I, I'm trying to make sure I, I don't glaze over anything. But so my cousin says, do you hear that? And as he as he's saying that, I hear between where we were in the edge of the river is about 40 yards and it's open. It's 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 small grasses and little scrub brushes. There's nothing there, nowhere to hide. It, it's all open, you know, and we hear rustling somewhere where we should be able to see it. It's not pitch black out the fire is going you know what i mean going enough to melt a part of the tent and one of the guidelines for it and it was like 12 15 feet away from the fire it was going you know so we hear it and then we start feeling and hearing the thumping so there was something moving that we couldn't see um and it sounded like it was coming from that open area like where there's nowhere to hide uh that that's what put it over the edge for us to get in the water and drift away and we uh my one cousin had the idea let's drop the anchor in the channel we'll keep an eye on that fire because uh, we didn't want to start a forest fire you know what i mean um so we we gather up our stuff we get in the skiff and we get out in the channel and he drops the anchor and it doesn't set until we're a little further down than where we wanted to be and as we're sitting there um we were low in the skiff we, we were just looking above the freeboard you know what i mean and we we're armed and we we're keeping an eye out because once that movement and we heard and felt that thudding and couldn't see it we went panic mode we went gotta go you know 
we, we were out of there. So as we're watching, you could see shadows moving from the reflection of the firelight back just out of sight. Everything was just out of sight. But that's when those demonic screams and howls started. Like it, it sounded literally like it, I wish I would have recorded it. It would have been worth money to some horror movie production studio. It was ungodly, like a woman being murdered, uh, the gnarliest bear growl you ever heard, like just it, real weird. It, but it was all just a, a continuous demonic type of sound, you know? Anyway, yeah. So as that's transpiring, we hear a scream in one of the uh, lit fire logs comes flying out into the river and that's when we decided we're going to just just let the river drift us out yeah yeah i would have got out too i don't blame you yeah we were gonna sit there and just figured okay i i didn't the panic in me i i thought they were gonna try to ambush us initially from the jump and i don't want to it could have been a curiosity thing you know, they could have rushed in and had us if, 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 if they were really hunting us at that point. You know what I mean? But I'm so biased. I have to try not to look at it that way. Like, because that could have been total curiosity. But how they orchestrated it, it felt, it felt ominous. Yeah. So the natives in the lower 48, I've heard say that the Sasquatch are able to follow you. And kind of like, no matter where you go, they're going to be there. I shouldn't say everywhere, but certain places, it's the same yeah, group following I, I, you around. There, there's, a, there's something similar to one of my elders in 95, because I was talking about a, some circumstances that happened and, and sharing with some other relatives, a great aunt of mine, she told me I was marked. And I was like, what do you mean marked? She goes, how many, how many times have you seen the hairy man? I said, I've always seen him at a distance. She goes, more than twice? I was like, yeah, you know, and she was like, oh, you're, you're marked. And I was like, what does that mean? And she just said, stay out of the woods. I, you know, I didn't pay attention to that. I thought it was just an elder telling me, you know, don't go in the woods. You basically be careful, you know. But the things that happened since then, like 11 years later, I'm being attacked on a river by these things. It, it kind of, you know, something I, I cast to the side as eh, whatever has potential to it because i haven't it's not like every time i go out i'm seeing these things it's where i'm going out at that they are and if if they're nearby up here bro they will come and let you know they they will make themselves known to you one way or another even if it's on a snow machine trail and you stop and look back you're going to see it looking at you on the trail you, you see what i mean it's going to make itself known one way or another if it's near you up here yeah, absolutely. And being Mark kind of makes sense because most people never have an experience and the people that do have multiple encounters. Right. And, and we talked about that. I think it's that thing that uh, that primal thing, bro, that I was talking about that gets opened up like the intuition level just goes through the roof because, you, you know, subconsciously you've experienced something that's awoken that part of your mind that goes primal. It works on that other level of um, very acute awareness. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I I would much rather at times, bro, just be dumb and, and dumb and blind to it because there's been a lot of beautiful places I've been wanting to go to, but the times I went, I got that feeling, and I just couldn't force myself to go. So I would just pick a different place. You know what I mean? So I since that day especially that night on the river i don't go against my intuition that feeling of and eh, maybe you shouldn't if i feel like maybe i shouldn't i don't go i just i won't go yeah see with me i end up going just because here in missouri most people just run into the forest walk in the forest without a, you know a weapon or another person but where you live you don't do that you don't just go aimlessly walking through the woods without <laughs> no. no protection or yeah people. no no yeah it, uh, a large caliber rifle in the bush is just like putting your boots on you know what i mean 
you, you don't go out of the cabin without it. You don't leave home without it. Um, uh, dangerous up here are moose. A moose will stomp you to death. Like, you know, um, like I made the jokingly, uh, I made the comment that up here everything wants to kill you. Uh, but it's not far-fetched, you know. So, yeah, it, it's, you always have something. And, and I know people that have never had issues and had very small caliber, small game kind of firearms or whatever. And, and have never had an issue, you know. Um you, you had made a comment before when we were talking about, and, and I mentioned it earlier, about speaking about them while out in the woods can draw them in, right? The, there, might, there might be something to that. I, I'm sure one of the viewers or some of the viewers may have been in situations where they just, it doesn't have to be Bigfoot or anything, but they, they just merely speak on something and then something related to that will happen. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm going to test a couple theories, man, when I'm filming this documentary. If if I am marked and they're after me, well, maybe I'll get good footage. Yeah, you know, I say it jokingly. I'm a little nervous about it, honestly. But I I just I just hope to get something compelling when I, when I go filming. Um, I already have a bunch of interviews with First Nations. Um, on on just the regular YouTube channel, I, I share experiences from everyone. In the documentary I'm making about Alaska Native perspective, it's strictly First Nations, and it, it's not a racial thing. It's just a uh, a cultural kind of spotlight to to check out certain regions where the hairy man is prevalent. Yeah, and that's a uh, subarctic Alaskan yeah. Sasquatch. Yeah, subarctic correct? Alaska Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's out. strictly Alaska based, you know. Um I, I feel these things are dangerous up here. Uh I even if people just listen for the stories, then you, they'll they'll have that in their mind. Maybe they'll hear something that was spoke about in one of those stories, like a weird owl hoot, a weird whatever, and it causes them to leave and it potentially saved their life, then hey. You know, it's worth it because we got 500 to 2,000 missing people up here a year. And that's a lot. Yeah. So I heard a story on Dixie Cryptid where this kid about got killed by a bull and a Sasquatch came out and killed that bull. Yeah. What What would you say about a story like that or one where Sasquatch pulls people out of a burning car? Do you think there's good and evil Sasquatch? Yeah, I honestly, I think that because there's a lack of a generational, like large population interaction zones, so to speak, if that makes any sense, everything is so yeah. remote, there's not that same interaction. So because of that lack of interaction, they don't know us like that. They know us yeah. as every once in a while they see one of us and one of us are shooting at it. Let's be honest. Uh, up here in Alaska, anyway, that a lot I know a lot of people that are taking pot shots at these things. I've I've uh, intentionally shot center mass. I wasn't just winging shots, you know, it just anywhere except through the wall. Let me, <laughs> but that was different it was circumstances. But. You know, all, all the interaction they have is those brief moments where if they see one of us and we're popping shots, then that's all they have to go on as far as historically. You know, unlike where you guys are or somewhere else where people have been feeding them and whatnot for a long time. You know, I, I think that's yeah. the biggest difference. Yeah, that makes sense. They're more accustomed to people around here just because, right. yeah, they, they're used to viewing people all the time. In your case, it's more remote and they just want to be left alone because they can. Yeah. And we got so much connected wood line and, and it, it, it's unreal. You know, Alaska is yeah. very large. Uh, how it's laid out on a map is kind of deceiving. You know, it kind of looks like a little bump out there at the end. But it, it's you can, you know, cut it in half and it's still bigger than Texas. So. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah, years ago, before I even had my experiences and encounters, 
on Sasquatch Chronicles, I used to hear him interview people that would talk about mountain giants. Now, do you think that's yeah. a thing? Do you think that's possibly what messed with you that night or what's around? I, I think these were the hairy man that messed with me. Um, mm. But I've seen larger than 24 inch tracks with six toes up in, San, in Sunshine Valley over by Bear Creek. Um, we, we went a different direction that day. Hairy man tracks have five toes. That's it. This, this track had six. And at the time I wasn't, I, I wasn't educated as far as, um, six fingered, six toes kind of, uh, mythology that's out there. Uh, but that's what it was. It was, it didn't smear and slide. It was six individual, very clear cut, crisp toes. Yeah, now those sound more Nephilim. Yeah, biblical, exactly. Yeah, because they got the six toes. Yeah, but it and was how tall they are. 20, yeah, I, I didn't see nothing but that track, but that was enough. When you go from something that you know, eighteen, twenty-two inch track, eh? But when this thing is is dramatically larger than that, then you, you know, knowing what you know about the smaller track, you don't want nothing to do with that bigger track. You know, yeah, and I I heard that episode. Uh, I've reached out asking about mountain giants, about the little people, uh, moose man, and various other things that I personally heard growing up. They have not mainstream stuff, just some you know regional type things. I've been reaching out to relatives to get to the core of the story to see what the the actual beginning story is, which is kind of hard because it kind of over time it kind of changes you know when it goes from generation to generation but what's moose man you gotta tell me about that is that like the oh. the wendigo oh, i don't want man. i don't i don't want to say the name but wendigo i heard it's bad uh, to say it. no no this this is actually um more like a talking sasquatch in essence with the with the bigger muzzle that looked similar to a moose's muzzle Okay. And I mentioned yep. the, the Gugway, the type three Bigfoot that certain researchers talk about. Do you think that's what that is? Uh, or what messed with you that night? Just a more aggressive what messed Sasquatch. With us that night, it, it showed its teeth to my cousin. They were flat block teeth, but eye teeth were just a bit more than what we have. And it was all proportionate to size. So it was, it's not like it had the, the Gugway fangs or whatever in the, protruding snout this no this face was relatively flat with that nose flat down like that um so it was a little more, sasquatch like uh, big I male sasquatch was, yeah it, it was a very large and who knows how long they actually live you know we got yeah. a protein source up here man where, where where i was at bristol bay that's the largest salmon return in the world all five species uh, primarily sockeye salmon the red salmon largest in the world millions and millions of salmon return every year and go all the way up and through there all the way up down uh, almost to iliamna you know so there's a protein source for them to get very big and with the isolation and the pot shots and all this the aggression i i, I try to objectively look back at it but they came in on us you know we, we did nothing to provoke that. We were just there, you know? They didn't even give you, like, a wood knock before they shifted the cabin? Nothing? No. Nothing. Not not a weird sound. It just it, the, the only time anything changes when that place creaked a little bit, the air immediately changed. It was like, I think it was more our awareness level automatically went, huh? And, and there could have been a lot of that involved initially, but the pressure that started after that was real weird. It was like it was there, but then once we saw the eye shine outside the door and got back inside and shut the little J hook, it was like we put on ear protection. It, it was muffled. Everything we we're saying to each other was muffled. Like, and I know with paranormal activity. Like, it takes a lot for that kind of stuff to manifest. And when it does, it kind of sucks all the air out of the atmosphere. And it kind of, I don't know, makes it feel like the barometric pressure is really high. And 
Yeah. Just everything's weird feeling. Kind of, I don't know. I don't. You've never been in a tornado, probably in Alaska, but it's that feeling, or like a hurricane. I've, I've, I, yeah, I, I've been in tornado-like weather. Um, I've lived outside of Alaska. I have relatives down in Texas and whatnot. But um, it, it reminds me of like the pressure when your ears don't pop when you get off a plane, but mm. without the sharp pain involved. But just the pressure add a little more to it. It. it when I, I should my ears should still be messed up from firing that that shotgun inside that little eight foot square place, but because you know, I wasn't here. It was just a thump, 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 you know, and everything was just tunnel vision, and I was I was coming to grips with dying in those moments. Yeah, so it's almost like you had headphones on in a way. Yeah, just with like uh, pressure. Yeah. But different, it, similar but different. It, I, I, I don't have the words to express exactly what it is. I can't articulate it. Um, but it was definitely pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, can you say that this was 100% natural or with what you just described, do you think there was some type of paranormal essence behind it? Man, all, all I saw was flesh and bone. I... I mean, we we could call that pressure paranormal because that's obviously not a normal thing. We don't go through life going, oh, just pressure hitting me. You, you know what I mean? Not on that kind of level. Um, so, I mean, in, in essence, that's paranormal. But there was no, uh, on that trip, I didn't see any orbs or anything involved or any anything outside of what appeared to be a natural being. Yeah. Well, I guess what I was getting at earlier is when like paranormal beings are there, they're going to suck all the energy out of the area and oh, you're going to feel okay, large amounts of, yeah, well, you're going to feel large amounts of fear. So that's the only thing that I kind of put to that. I mean, maybe right. being paranormal, but it's um, hard to say because I hear these stories about Sasquatch using portals and I mean, as crazy as it sounds, nobody's, you know, drug in a body and said you know here it is so right. i yeah. i question everything <laughs> yeah oh of course of course um who knows that may be true uh, you know what I, I just me personally i i haven't seen that i, I haven't seen yeah. now I've, separately i've seen some crazy stuff separately i've seen orbs in the woods separately i've seen a ufo separately but there was never anything connecting those circumstances except the area yeah so, I mean, yeah, and that's we were talking, yeah, yeah, we were talking the other day about the Alaskan Triangle and how a bunch of planes went missing, and even the planes that went looking for the, the pilots got lost right. themselves, and they've never been found to this day. And it's like, how can something that's stationary not be found? But, you know, people, be, people are complaining about the Sasquatch, and, you know, nobody finding the perfect right. evidence, but. I think yeah, Alaska's um, just huge. It is. It's vast. And dude, uh, we have a slow growth uh, or a short growth season. Everything up here is acclimated to bush the hell out real fast. Like, real fast. <laughs> Everything gets big up there, though. Like, even, like, pumpkins and squash, moose, oh, yeah, bear. Everything gets bear, giant. Man. Yeah. Yeah. World record stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I know some people that grow outdoor medicinal plants and, and they're very happy with making use of that, that growth spurt. But, um, yeah, it, just the foliage and everything, it comes in so quick, like, but we don't get leaves. I still don't have leaves on the trees outside. I have some, uh, pussy willow sprouting and whatnot, but you know, we usually don't have every tree with leaves on it till, gosh, May sometime. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sometimes mid-May, depending, because up here by law, we have to have our studded tires off by the end of April. But sometimes they extend it a week or two because we still get snowfall up until, gosh, we've had snowfall in July before. So, you know, it's just so different up here. It's real. That's the hardest thing to convey because watching a TV show about Alaska, hearing about the mosquitoes, land of the midnight sun, 
until you've actually been up here, been on a float plane trip somewhere and experienced that daylight almost 24 hours a day in the summer, it, it can't, it, you, you can't compare it to anything, you know, because it, maybe some places in Canada, you know, and, and maybe Siberia uh, or anywhere above that longitudinal line or whatever latitudinal line of that where those things occur. But, yeah. you know, I, th- I think it's wild that there's still natives that say that they've seen mammoths or people claim to find like tracks and there's yeah. stories on the internet too. Yeah. Um, up by, uh, Fort Yukon over by Ruby, North of Ruby, uh, Galena. Um, I've heard from people, which is secondhand from someone else that, Oh, there was a weird elephant sound out in the woods. You know, what, what's making an elephant sound in remote Alaska, you know, in the winter? Like, yeah, I'd be interested after I do my hairy man project. I think I might want to go see if there's some mammoth out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it'd be worth a shot. I feel like if authorities found something like that, they wouldn't tell everybody just because if something like that happened to live way out in the middle of nowhere, why would you go send a bunch of people to be like, oh, let me help you. You know, let's let's help it because obviously you don't need our help. That's the last yeah. thing you want to introduce yeah. to it is people. Probably be its demise. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> right. I know some yeah. trophy hunters. I'd be like, yeah, I got that mammoth last year up on by Fort Yukon, you know, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that's the which, same with the Sasquatch. Yeah, yeah. I, when I go out to film, I'm uh, part of me is really excited, and another part of me has that that inkling of what if you are marked, you know. And I take most of that with a grain of salt, but if there's some truth in it, I I worry for my safety. You know what I mean? Because I'm not I'm not just going to. Uh, and not knocking where anyone goes to do, you know, they're looking around and, and whatnot. I'm literally going out in the middle of nowhere, like literally middle of nowhere. And so, okay, let's assume you are marked and these places that you're going to venture off to, you're going to have activity. Can you kind of tell us what your plan is and what you plan on doing with your channel? Um, just sharing what I find up here in Alaska. Uh, uh, it would be great to have some activity that I can get, like, really good evidentiary footage. You know what I mean? Nothing nothing globby, nothing um, that you have to guess at, you know? Uh, there, there's do, you plan, plan, that, you know? do you plan on going back up to the shack where you had yeah. the terrifying yeah. counter? Yeah, that, that I'm planning at the same time of year exactly this coming fall, mid-September. I'm going to be going up to New York and I'm going to film from uh, our place in Dillingham. A little bit of the gearing up in the intro, introduce the people that are going on the team, whoever it may end up being. And then we're going to go up to the New York. And meanwhile, while we're doing that, another one of our cousins is going to bring a bunch of canoes for us up to a, a chain of rivers that connect the lakes up to Tick Chick Narrows. And we're going to meet up there and then we're going to canoe trip back down the other way back down to a so we're going to come up the nushigak and basically wrap that whole area on an expedition with the center point of the expedition being the uh the shack on the nuyakak if it's still there Mm -hmm. now with you guys you're kind of just going to be out there to observe the activity look for sign you're not trying to go out there wood knocking and doing vocals no that's not if they're around, I don't have to worry about none of that. They mm-hmm. will make it known. That's why I, I try to tell people, check out that video I was telling you about before about Keith E66. He's got a metal detecting channel. He's like a dentist from Fairbanks. He only does metal detecting. He doesn't have a dog in the fight. But he has footage of this thing screaming in the distance, and it starts throwing rocks at him. And then he gets the hell out of Dodge when it gets closer and does this really weird scream. Uh, but it, it's you know they will come in on you up here so i'm i plan on using that to my advantage um kind of like where i decide to camp out i, I want to be strategic to where it, it's defendable 
and retreatable. You know what I mean? And, and hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. Definitely be safe when you're up there. Oh, for sure, man. For sure. You know, it's just, um, I, I have some other relatives, uh, elders and whatnot that are, um, putting me together, uh, as something or another. Once I, I, it wasn't fully explained to me. Once it is, I, I'll share with you on, on a different note. Sorry about that. Just something that popped in my mind, uh, mm. something to, to take with me to protect me, uh, in essence is what it boils down to but i didn't get the full rundown of exactly what was what on that you know yeah so you're not going to try to make peace with them or do you i'm going to go get... peaceful like <laughs> yeah i'm going to go peaceful like but track record being I, i'm trying not to uh, i'm not going to fly off the handle and just po start popping shots if i hear something moving in the woods you know, now if there's an active of a you know aggression like there was last time, then you know we'll get out of there. We'll we'll do what we have to do. I'm not going with that intent. I would much rather be filming with a camera versus shooting at these things. Yeah, and is there any chance that you're going to stay the night in that same shack again or a tent in that same spot? To be determined. <laughs> yeah. I, I can I still, talk all big and bad, you know, like, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to stay in that spot, dare him to come in. No, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to be quivering and crying like a little baby when I get there. Yeah, I, 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 I can't even camp next to my place where I had my encounters, and that's like 50 feet in the woods. But I, I mean, I can go anywhere else and camp, doesn't matter if it's deep, just right there. I, right. Get, that feel, I get that feeling like you do, and I just don't yeah. like it. And that, I'm anticipating that, but I'm not trying to build it up so much that I, I, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I feel I'm going to feel like shit when I get there, so I won't do it. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm just going to go open-minded, be calm and collected, you know, and try not to put off a come eat me vibe. You know, <laughs> I, I try to put off a I'm not food vibe. I, I don't know. It, it still boggles me why it went down like that. You know, uh, I, f I still feel like they were trying to get us there. Yeah. There was no, there was no middle ground for me. And I, I grant you, I'm an insider looking in at the situation. I, I could easily be overlooking something that was unaware to me at the time, but there was nothing good about that whole night. You know, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The darkness is already terrifying terrifying and it feels like something's going to get you but in your case something actually was trying to get you so i can't imagine right. the feeling right and i think me it just shooting off the jump kind of stopped what they were planning on doing i don't know what that plan was this is all speculation but it seemed like everything changed once i shot through the wall when i saw the one that looked in his face and it started moving and i just boom 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 i feel that changed whatever approach they had because initially they tried to lure us out you know, make a sound. That thing could have been because when I saw movement over his shoulder, how long it had been there? I I don't know. I was dicking around with the rear sight. We were talking about nonsense. You know, well, it was about finding you know potential pay dirt, but it was just small talk. We weren't being loud. They were quietly playing cribbage. It, it was the loudest thing in there was the hiss from that damn Coleman lantern. You know what I mean? So there was. It was unprovoked. In my eyes, it was unprovoked. You know, so. Yeah. So, in your, in your case, like, I guess your message to people is watch out for these things, and they're not all friendly. Yeah. Um. I, the whole point of what I'm trying to get across, you know, is that you never know. There, there's the, there's two sides to that coin. You see what I mean? And I, I'm just, for Alaska, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell people what I'm coming across, what's being shared with me. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that at, at some point my email has some emails from people saying, hey, we've been, you know, gifting this and, and this is our interaction. And, you know, I, I'm hoping to get something like that. I, I just haven't yet. Everything's been of a predatory behavior. Yeah. And if that does happen, 
in the case that you do have a positive interaction, how would that change your mind possibly about them? Or do you think it would? It would be a huge relief, bro. It would be a huge relief because then I can let go of that, that, that angst that, um, they're all out to get me. You see what I mean? I, I, I would be able to let go of that part that I'm holding on to because of the trauma of what happened. Um, and, and be a little more open-minded. I, I'm going in open-minded as far as I can be open-minded at this point. I'm hoping to expand that, you know what I mean? Because there, there's just something off about what I'm hearing from people and what I've experienced myself as far as what's their motivation. And it, it's it's always in a, an aggressive nature. Now, Outside of a few uh, stories about them being mischief and stealing your smoked salmon, um, but that every, everything else is is like stalking kids, luring people out, singling people out. It's never it's never anything good. And also, I was told that they're vindictive, and since I shot one or or more, they're always gonna be on the lookout to get me. You know, and I, I take that with a grain of salt as well. But maybe there's some truth in that. I don't know. Um, they better mean it if they do, because I'm going to mean it defending myself if, if you get my drift. Um, yeah, just, I, I, uh, I get the creeps about stuff, man, because um, because of what I went through, I, I get these scenarios that start spinning them up in my head like, well, what if this happens? What if this happens? What what if all these what ifs start spinning up? So I have to, I have to curb that and kind of let it go, because then if I don't, once I get out there, guess what? Scenarios are running through my head. Are they going to attack from here or over here? Instead of, let's be cool. Let's start a fire. I'll you know I don't want to be on that mindset of constant. They're out to get me. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people that have had encounters with these creatures feel the same way as you yeah it i would much rather see a softer friendlier side um i used to go very remote all the time um the the time after that in 07 on the riverbank the next time i went remote was to ruby and that was I should say for an extended period of time, that was in 2018 that I went to Ruby and a few times in between 2007 and 2018, maybe two or three little short trip or, you know, day trip, couple day trip doing remote cabin builds. Um, other than that, I haven't been out there, you know, so I, I, I want to do more of that, but there's that. That lingering part of me, man, that's like, you can't trust it. You can't trust it. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to shake that crap. Yeah. Well, I think in this case, you're going to have to go with your gut feeling because there's not much information out there. And you exactly. only have the stories that you've heard to go off of. And yeah, I would trust that more than anything on the Internet. Yeah, I'm not going to hear the advice I need in a book. You know, what I mean, I got to go to the people and the sources to get that. Info. And that's another reason I'm reaching out. I want to know more. Why is it happening like that up here? What, you know, and of course, there's we can speculate it's a population thing. That's my working theory. But I don't have enough data, let's say, to make any determination on any of it, you know, outside of what I've seen and what I've heard. And that's been aggressive and predatory. That's all I've heard. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense, you know, you, you live in Alaska and in your mind, you're thinking, you know, these things can hide really good and there's tons of forests. But how do you feel when you hear these stories from like Florida around like city parks and stuff? And it's like, how do these things not get caught? Um, you know, I saw a thing about their hair being uh, translucent or hollow in the middle or, or something along those lines. And from how I seen that one female disappear into the, the tree line, she didn't like disappear like into a portal. She just blended in seamlessly outside of the uh, branches and stuff she hit once she hit in the trees. 
it was sporadic trees, but she blended in seamlessly. Like it was unreal. I, I used the analogy last time of a, a duckling going into the grass, you know, or a little spruce chicken baby. You know, you could have a dozen of them at your feet in a little shrub. You won't see a single one of them. You'll hear them chirping, but you won't see them because they're so camouflaged. It's 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 unreal, man. Like, have you told this story already about the Sasquatch that you saw? The the female. The yeah, to you. Okay, okay. I was making sure yeah. that was the same story. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but no, that's. That's the same experience that I had when I saw the one up here on the driveways. It just got up nonchalant, looked over at me a couple of times, like the Patterson Gimlin film. And then when it hit the, the vegetation, it just disappeared. Not like a portal, but like it blended yeah. in. Yeah. And I've seen footage, you know, uh, Real Eyes TV and a couple other places, they slow down people's footage and show these things moving outside of their view. There's one where these kids are going up on a hill on a four-wheeler, and this thing is right next to a tree and just kind of squats down as the wheeler's kind of maneuvering around them. Mm. That, I think that's a perfect example of what we're getting at. They can seamlessly blend in. They they got a grizzled coat or an orangish coat. Uh Ah, geez, man. The, and see, that this is where we can get into that unknown and speculate all day. And that's what's so intriguing as well. There's no definitives. There's nothing we can go to for uh, confirmation on anything outside of anecdotal evidence from others. And the physical evidence comes in what casts and recorded sounds, uh, you know, um, Yeah, there's all kinds of evidence out there just scattered all around. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, for those who don't care to believe or are so caught up in, oh, it's not real, there's some things that they're just not going to accept regardless, you know? Um, I, I know there's some emails that were shared for me about some Alaskan experiences. I'm kind of, I'm not hesitant to share. I'm just trying to make sense of them. You know what I mean? Um because they don't, you wouldn't think they would go together. Like one involves seeing little people, and an hour later, after this person had took pot shots at these little people in the tree line, an hour later, where they were staying at this cabin, a hairy man was trying to get them. You, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not like this guy is out to lie. He's he's an elder. He's got nothing to gain. You know, he's gaining nothing. Yeah. And it's not like he was sitting there going, oh, I'm going to fool this, you know, this Gus up. I'll tell him a tale. It wasn't that at all. He was simply, the way he did it, he was just sharing what had happened. You know what I mean? It was genuine and sincere. So, kind of like, geez, you know, all these things could be interwoven in a way that we just don't get. We don't see the connection. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There's a lot more out there than what even the Bible can tell us or ancient history. Right. Right. Because the Bible only gives the overview. The rest is played out. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> and yeah. you know said that the veil would thin and 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 you know be thinning in in the end times and what have you and there's so many more sightings of sea monsters wendigos bigfoot you name it across the board man it's it's some to it you know there there's something going on that none of us really speculation aside we don't know nothing about it you know yeah yeah, I completely agree. All right, Fred. Well, if you would, just keep me in the loop with everything that you do up there and whatever you find. I mean, obviously, we're going to see it on your channel, but if you ever want to oh, come yeah. back and talk about what you experienced, I, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, definitely. Um, maybe we could do it halfway. I'm, I'm going to do it in three parts The as far as the documentary because Alaska is so big, I got to plan ahead and go to one area and do the interview portion for that there and then you know to another area and then to Dillingham in the fall um 
but somewhere along in that loop, I'll uh, I'll get a hold of you and we can arrange something and you know yeah catch up. maybe we can do we can do an episode about gear and stuff and just talk about the the different equipment that we use or what, right know, yeah let on. me get some filming under my belt first because uh, like I said in our culture it's we don't usually go you know app room so this is it's going to be new to me but you know I watch enough stuff to to kind of get a rough idea of what's you know what I'm going to have to deal with so. Yeah. Well, I just got this new night vision camera, so I'll let you know how it goes the next time we right. talk and whatever you whatever you're doing, maybe I can help or you yeah. can teach me a thing or two. Yeah, definitely, man. Um I, I haven't played with any of our equipment yet to give you an honest review, but I'm sure I'll have plenty of opportunity once we get out in the bush, you know, to do that. So yeah, but I'll definitely keep you in the loop, bro. Okay. And, and actually, you know, you're one of my main motivators because even though you do interviews and you do all this, I know for a fact you're in the field all the freaking time. You know what I mean? You, you're not just talking about it. You, you're you you're being about it. And I respect that. You know what I mean? It's not you're not sitting there on the couch giving your perspective. You actually go off in the field and play, you know. I appreciate that, man. Yeah. All but right, yeah, man. just hit me up you got my number and if anything exciting happens between now and then i'll let you know yeah if there's a body laid out in front of me you might catch me on facebook live or something you know like hey man i need some help someone record this for me before they take it away in my footage you know (laughs) yeah carry an extra large boomstick and um some pepper spray yeah (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah that might help (laughs) all right bro Well, you have a good one, man, and I'll hit you up later when you're not busy. Yeah, absolutely. You have a good one, man. Take care. All right, bro. Later. Later. Thank you, Fred, for being a guest on the show again. And if you haven't heard Fred's story yet, please be sure to go to my past videos and check it out. Just be careful out there, man, and always keep your head on a swivel. If you guys enjoy this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, or else the hairy man will come and get you. Alright, that's it for now, and I will catch you guys on the next one.